Uh, Andy Edfield will be joining us here momentarily from USC. And there he is. A um, little bit different background, a little stark there after uh, Ethan had the whole Trojans behind him there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and, you know, Ethan, very impressive, Andy. Um, clearly someone that it, it feels like exudes confidence, gets it. What's it like to have someone like that, that you can feel that you've got that trust when you hand them the basketball? Ethan was a tremendous leader last year as a freshman. We signed him late in the spring and he came out and beat two other point guards for the starting spot and just had a terrific freshman year. He was a little inconsistent in certain areas as he learned the college game, but he helped us win 22 games last year. And uh, he was uh, one of the most important players on the court because of his toughness and his leadership. And we expect him to develop uh, as a sophomore to have a better year this year for us overall. We need him to score more. I think he just touched a little bit about his shooting and his his playmaking. So we need to be reliable. He needs to be reliable every game to get us close to double figure scoring and six or seven assists. You know, it's interesting. He's talking about the timing that he's already built pretty quickly with, uh, with Mobley uh, and the assists will probably stay the same, if not go up uh, without the kind of off season that you normally would have. Um, what is it about Evan Mobley and maybe some of your other players that it sounds like from afar that the rhythm is there in terms of um, everyone being a little bit more in sync. I think it goes to the each individual player and their characteristics, their IQ, their decision making, their anticipation. And both Mobley's Isaiah and Evan have tremendous uh, IQ on the basketball court. They know where other players are. They know where the defense is. So as a point guard or lead guard with Tajidi and Ethan and some of our other wing players that handle the ball. It's nice to be able to throw the ball to spots knowing that they're going to get there. And uh, Chavez Goodwin from Wofford, a grad transfer, he also is very smart on the court. And we have Josh Morgan who's sitting out this year and then Bubakar, our other freshmen. So we, we have the advantage of a lot of length and size. It does make it easier for our point guards uh, and, and our lead guards to, to get them the ball because even if it's not a perfect pass, they can go get it. Uh, but it, it helps because our bigs are basketball players. Uh, they are overall well-rounded offensive players. And, and so they understand the concepts of spacing, the concepts of uh, where the defense goes and, and how to read and react. All right, let's go back to when you guys were allowed to at least congregate, but it was outside. Um, very old school, uh, almost like five-star back in the day. What was it like to be outside working with your players? Well, it was miserable, to be honest. Uh, we were in a 95-degree heat in Los Angeles in the summertime in late August and early September. Coaches had masks and gloves on. The players had to wear masks, and they could not share the basketballs with each other, meaning they all had their own ball with their initials on, and they couldn't pass the ball to each other. So it were, they were not the greatest workouts, but after being off for six months, we just wanted our team to have some camaraderie. We have five transfers on our team. We have two freshmen, so – a lot of the players had never been on USC's campus when we signed them. And, and uh, the five players we had never met in person. So to get them here on campus in late August for the start of school, even though it was remotely, uh, virtually online, we were able to get, get them on the tennis courts with basketball hoops on them uh, in the summer heat. So uh, whatever, whatever we could do just to build that camaraderie. Uh, so we spent about three or four weeks uh, with uh, the 95 degree heat. All right, so I don't want to romanticize it. So you, you made it real there. Um, look, the end of the regular season last season, that game against UCLA, phenomenal ending. You guys win at the buzzer. Um, that atmosphere, we're just not going to have it. Uh, hopefully we can have it next year. We have no idea if we'll have any fans, but certainly not like what we saw at the end of that. What kind of adjustment is that going to be for you, your staff, and the players? I think it's going to be very unusual this season because there's so many great home court advantages in our league, including the Galen Center. We were eight and one at home in our league last year, including that last second win against UCLA. So to have a sold out crowd on national CBS sports uh, and for Jonah Matthews to really end our season on that shot, uh, we didn't think that, that that would be our last game at the time, but the home court in the PAC 12 is very, very challenging. And so to go on the road now, you, you won't have any fans. And so I think uh, you'll see probably a higher percentage of road wins than you, in a normal year within conference play. 